Hello everyone. This video will give you a brief idea about a very important process in digital communication, sampling. Sampling in short it is a process of converting an analog signal to a discrete signal in time. This is the first process in analog to digital conversion. Of course, uh, sampling should follow quantization. We'll see that later. For the first process in converting a continuous time signal in or into a discrete time signal is definitely sampling. This process of sampling, in order to have a deeper understanding of this particular process, we need to analyze the time and frequency domain of the sample signal. Before that, let me give you a motivation of why we use this uh, technique of sampling for digital communication. Our channels are bandpass channels. They all, almost all channels are bandpass channels. There is no existing channel in this world which is which passes all frequencies. So they are they can handle only a finite amount of data. And our continuous time signal, if I want to transmit from one point to the another, as uh, it it uh, if I transfer its values as such. There are infinite number of amplitude values between two finite time instances. So it is not practical to transmit all these values. So there came a famous theorem called sampling theorem proposed by uh, Nyquist, which says that if you sample the signal at a rate two times the maximum frequency of the information signal, you will be able to completely recover this signal if you transmit this signal to the receiver. At the receiver, even though you are not transmitting all the data points, you will be able to completely retrieve the signal very easily if you follow this particular theorem. In order to have a good understanding, let us see an example. This is x of t which is our information signal. x of t is in time domain and x of f, it is the same signal in its frequency domain. This shape, uh, almost a rectangular shape is an arbitrary one. In fact, the shape can be anything, but uh, this shape is just to show you that uh, this frequency limits should be from minus fm to fm. It should be some finite frequency. It cannot be infinite in frequency. This signal in continuous time information signal you are going to sample should be a band limited signal. For sampling, the idea is very simple. You are multiplying this continuous time signal x of t with a train of impulses spaced by a time ts where ts is known as the sampling period. Sampling period is a period after which each sample is taken. And this is the expression for, uh, this is the expression for a train of impulses. We are going to multiply x of t with this train of impulses and what do we get? x s of t which is equal to x of t into x delta of t which is again another train of impulses but modulated in amplitude by the value of x of t at those instances where you have the delta functions. Alright. Let us see the frequency spectrum. The frequency spectrum uh, x delta of t, the frequency spectrum of f delta of t is again another uh, train of impulses and you can see the expression here delta f minus nfs it is a delta function and each delta each impulse is spaced by nfs n can take on values 1 2 3 or even negative it can take only integer values n can take on different values and you can see the spacing between 
each impulse is fs <coughs> and uh, by using the you know frequency domain certain certain manipulations we will get the figure like this we'll come to that i'll come to this uh, later uh, to understand that uh, let us have a deeper understanding of the expressions in time and frequency domain the sample signal xs of t is x of t into x delta of t which is this signal x of t into train of impulses which again by uh, by uh, the formula it is x of nts into delta of t minus nts x of nts is value of x of t at t equal to nts x delta of f is given by 1 by ts sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity delta of f minus mf nfs this is the frequency domain of the delta function and x of f convolution delta f minus nfs why it is a convolution we are multiplying in frequency do we are multiplying in time domain x of t into train of impulses so naturally in frequency domain it should be a convolution and that will give you x of f minus nfs x s of f is a sample signal that is equal to x of f convolution x delta of f which is written here substituting the value we get 1 by the sample the signal the frequency spectrum of the sample signal is 1 by ts sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity x of f minus nfs uh, observe this now remember this 1 by ts x of f minus nfs so it is x of f replicated at each instant after a distance of nfs all right as n takes on values 1 2 3 etc x of f is being replicated at each frequency point spaced by this value nfs now let me get back to this diagram you see this x of f and its replicates so this is the frequency spectrum of a sample signal x of f and its replicates all right uh, a very important consideration in sampling is that your sampling frequency fs this value that should be greater than or equal to 2 times fm the fm is the maximum frequency in your continuous time analog signal all right what happens if it doesn't follow this property then comes this problem of aliasing the spectrum of x of f it gets overlapped with the spectrum of the nearby replica this happens everywhere as a result a very important problem called aliasing occurs and aliasing will lead to loss of information which we want to avoid thank you so much for listening to this video